these up, and then we'll talk about these. So what we have here is uh, an inequality, two sides that are not equal. One side is bigger than the other, or one side is smaller than the other. Uh, and then we have these two potential solutions. Okay? If it is a solution, how do you know? Or how do you find out? Or plug in uh, or pair for x and y. OK, you plug them in for x and y, and that's it. And then it's, it's And then if what happens? If it's less than 3, then it's a solution. If this side's less than 3, yeah. which would mean that this is true, right? If this side were bigger than 3, this would be well, false. So it, it all comes down to, after you plug it in, determining if it's true or false, and then uh, making the conclusion from there. So we'll uh, plug in 0, 0 into the equation. We get 2 times 0 uh, minus 0 is less than 3. Let's see if that's true. 0 minus 0 is 0. Is 0 less than 3? Yeah, so what would we conclude about whether or not this is a solution? Yeah, it yeah is. it's a thing. It's, a, it's an ordered pair. That causes the statement, whatever the statement is, whether it's equals or not equals, causes it to be true. And this one over here, we just plug in that x and that y. 2 times x minus y is, it needs to be less than 3. So we have 4 plus 2 is 6. Is that less than 3? No, it's not less than 3. It's not not true, so not a solution. So I think on the homework, and perhaps on this homework quiz, there's confusion on, um, like, you thought that both of them had to be a solution, and if one of them wasn't, then they weren't both a solution, or something like that. Um, the question was asking, is this a solution, yes or no? Is this a solution, yes or no? They're just like two questions in one, that's all it was. Graph this inequality. The graph. Um, so where do we start? Study point. Three. So you probably draw a graph, right? I should have done that. Right. What do you mean three? You just said the number three. Both three on the y-axis. Starting at zero. I'm just gonna assume that. Okay. I don't want to just put words in your mouth. Starting at zero, we'll go up to three. We'll go up to positive three on the y-axis. We're bantering, by the way. Yeah, I so know. Okay, let you know that. Um, so we've got that. So what? What do we do then? Go up and then three from this From that point, okay. Then? Over one. Over one. Dotted that. line through both. Dotted line through both. Good. Dotted line. Okay, so um, what we did just now is just graph a line. We started there. We started using the y-intercept. We used the slope of 3, up 3 over 1, made another point. And why is this line dotted rather than solid? It's not equal to. This inequality does not include the possibility that they're equal to each other. Okay? Here comes a question that I, I asked, I've asked a hundred times, and I'll ask a million times more until I feel like there's no need because absolutely gets it. The thing about this line, since I, I use this to create it, the thing about this line is if I were to take a point from on the line and use that in, the, in that statement there, right? and I, I take this point, that x and that y, and I put that x and that y in here, then what would happen to both sides? If I took a point from on the line, right on the line right there, and put that x and y in there, then what would happen? What? Because? Because they, equal. because they would be equal, right? Both sides would be the same. That's exactly what this line is. It's a set of points. It's called a locus of points, okay? Uh, and the locus just means a bunch of points, like the collection of all the points. All the points where what happens? The x and the y from that point make both sides equal to each other, okay? And that's great for an equation. We would just graph the line and we'd be done. But this is an inequality, okay? But so that we still have a boundary of some kind, some kind of guideline, we still draw the line, we just draw it dotted, so there's also some kind of an emptiness there to let us know. Points on that line will not be solutions. 
Okay? Typically they would for an equation, but this isn't an equation, it's an inequality. <coughs> and now, because we normally will put y by itself on one side and the other stuff on the other side, we see we want y values that are less than these y values, right? These are y values too. You get y values on this side by just plugging in an x value and, and doing the math and figuring out what that is. So we want y values that are less than these y values. These are the y values you get by plugging in these x's. Right? So I plug in a particular x, I'll get out this y right here. Right? That's what I'll get on this side. But I don't want those y's. I don't want the y's that, that come out to be on the line. I want y's that are less than that. So where are y's that are less than that? Right? Y is a vertical thing. Bigger numbers are up here. Smaller numbers are down here. And if we want y values that are less than the y values on the line, then we want to shade below. Right. And lastly, number 18, can graph this one. Let's say that we will get y by itself. We have to get y by itself. Like is, it, is it impossible without getting y by itself? No. It shouldn't be impossible. Like we could, we could plug uh, a y in and solve for x, or x and solve for y, and find a couple points and plot this line. But it certainly is easier if we, solve, if we get y by itself. OK? Um, so we are going to get y by itself. It's the best idea, I think. Uh, so we'll do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. 5y less than or equal to negative 2x minus 10. Divide by 5, y is less than or equal to negative 2 fifths x minus 2. Now we got something to go off of. We got mx plus b. Negative 2 for our y intercept. Up to, it's the left 5. 2, 3, 5. And we connect them. How do we connect them? Solid line. Solid line. Points. From the line, points on the line, if we take the x and y and plug it in here, or here, or, or here, it'll be true. Or, well, it will be equal. Both sides will be equal. And since that's OK, you know, that symbol says that's OK, then we include the line in our solutions. Points on the line are cool, because points on the line will make both sides equal, and that's fine. Okay. But we don't only want those. We also want y values that are what? that are less. We want y values that are less than these y values on the line. Right? Here's the y value on the line. I want the values the y that are less. They're all down here. All, they're all down here. And I want the y values that are less than this y value. They're all down here. And we just keep doing that forever and ever. And we just wind up shading this big area like this. All right. <coughs> there we go. Are there any questions? Any questions from the homework at all? Other parts of the homework? All right. Then I want your homework. Yeah. As you're passing your homework, take a look at that, uh, that packet that I passed out. And if there are any problems that you don't think you know how to do, you should uh, ask about them. You should say, I don't know how to do number six. And then I'll say, we're going to copy that. I'll write them to six down one more time. And it'll go a lot like that.
But you need B in order to do that. So what are we going to do? How are we going to figure out what B is? So X, Y. You got an X right there. You, got, you know what a, a specific X and Y are. You know what the slope is. So you can put in 3 equals 3, the slope, times negative 2, the X plus B. 3 equals negative 6 plus B. And 9 equals B. And Y equals 3, X plus that? Is that good? Yep. Did I do anything wrong? It's hard when everything's so big. You have to write your problems this big to make mistakes more often. You might not realize it. Mm -hmm. Look how big I have to write this stuff. It's pretty big. Well, they, they did. They actually did say that. Oh. Okay. okay. I'm wrong. Can I go? Here were three. Three. Um, so zero, negative five, and it's perpendicular to by all the talking, it sounds like a majority of you are ready for me to just go ahead and pass this out. Maybe not. I should start looking for some questions. Okay. So they tell us there's a point, and they tell us perpendicular to this line. It's similar to this problem. They gave us a point. But then what they told us was the slope. OK, so let's go back here. Um, what piece of information can we get out of this fact perpendicular to some other line? Yeah? The slope is 1 over 2. So the slope is slope here is negative 2. And the slope for this line would be, because they're perpendicular, to the opposite reciprocal. So the opposite of a negative is a positive. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. And we're trying to fill in that equation. Now this is exactly the same as the previous problem. Now we have a slope and a point. Okay, And just so we don't do the exact same thing uh, twice, uh, now let's use, since we have a point and a slope, the point-slope form. Okay? If you remember the point-slope form, that's great. If you don't, and you just want to do it like previously, where we just solve for b, that works great too. Okay? Just do y minus y1, y minus negative 5 equals m slope times x minus the specific x that they give us. Uh, y plus 5 equals 1 half x minus 0. y equals 1 half x minus 5. So notice we didn't have to take the and plug it back in. When we got done, we solved for y. We solved. Next. Yes. <coughs> okay. So, let's say you crack open a dictionary. All right. Y'all know what those are, right? The what? Mm -hmm. what? A dictionary? Yeah. Is that one day, one day, the, the youngsters, they won't know what dictionaries are. So, 
comes to me like, you mean Google? You think it tells me everything that I need to know? Yeah, so a dictionary. You crack open a dictionary and you look up direct variation. Okay, you open up to the D's and you look up direct variation. All right, it's going to say direct variation. Uh, and then it'll have like broken into syllables and it'll have a point of origin and it'll tell you that it's uh, a noun uh, and all these kinds of things. And then it'll have the definition right down there. Right, you're familiar with that structure? They tell you how it's pronounced, they tell you how many syllables are in it and all that kind of stuff. And then they tell you the definition. Okay, the definition of direct variation is very important. What is the definition of direct variation? y is equal to some constant number that is always the same number multiplied by x, x the, the thing that changes. Okay. That's the definition. If you look it up in the dictionary, that's exactly what it is. Um, so if I were to talk about the graph of something like this, which is y equals a times x, <clears throat> I can't say a whole lot because, well, what, what will this be for the line? What will this us about the line? The slope, okay? This slope can be anything right now. We don't know what it is specifically. Uh, it might be three halves, it might be negative five sevenths. We don't know. So we don't know really like what angle it's going to be at, what slope it's going to have. But what do we know about it? What do we know about the line that this equation would make? It will go through the origin. I won't say it starts because it lines go on forever. But yeah, it will go right through that origin. Because right? we can write this plus is zero. Mx plus b, b will always be zero for a direct variation. So whatever the graph is, it would always have to go through here. It could go if it's really shallow or really steep or negative or whatever, but it would have to go through the origin. That's the one thing that we do know for sure. So we look at this graph, and what do we decide? No, it doesn't go through the origin, it goes like this. So clearly, these things don't go together. That's direct variation. This is not, because this does not go through the origin. Um, and it's not, so we don't give an equation, and we're done. That was 17. 19? Who said 19? Okay, so this is the same kind of a question when we say, uh, does y vary directly with x? We're saying that, they, that x and y vary directly, or we're saying uh, there's direct variation between y and x, or just lots of different ways to put the order of those words that means the same thing. Right? So still, y should equal ax, and if we look at the graph, and the graph looks like this, and we ask ourselves, is this direct variation? Yeah. Yes, it is, okay. Uh, if so, write a function rule for the relationship shown by the data. So well, we probably should find some points, right? Pretty useless to find the equation of a line without any points. Definitely goes through 0, 0. All right. And it looks like it goes up 2 and to the left 1. All right, so we want to fill out y equals mx plus b, right? All right, do we know these things? Okay, y equals what's m? Two. Two? Negative. Negative two? Is it two or negative two? Two. 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 Not negative two is positive two. Minus two. Minus two. Well, this is just an Okay. Let's just look. It's rise over run. Okay? So it looks like we have a change in y versus the change in x. And paying, paying attention to like which way we move. Do we move in a positive direction or a negative direction? All right. So we move up two, is that positive or negative? Positive. That's a positive two. And then we move to the left, is that a positive or a negative move? Negative. It's negative, so it's over negative one. So it is a negative two slope times x. Plus what's the y-intercept? Zero. Zero, for all direct variations, it's always zero, the y-intercept. So we're done, y equals negative two x. If I want y, I just take x, multiply by negative two. What's that? 21. 
So this is going to be a graph of an absolute value. And in general, what do the absolute value graphs look like? What kind of shape do they have? V. A V shape. And that V may open up, it may open down, it may be wide, it may be narrow, it may be, well, let's say shallow and steep. Those are the words that I like. Um, it could be any number of shapes. It might be at the origin. It might not. Okay, it might be somewhere else. So it's, it's our job to figure out where it is. How steep is it? Is it opening up? Is it opening down? Did you have your hand on Michael? No. Kind of good stretch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, mm, the time for explaining why is, is, is kind of past. I've done it a, a few times. I mean, it's on, it's on the public inter internet that you can look at um, at any time. So, we'll just use knowledge that I assume you have. And if we, outside of the absolute value, subtract 2, what effect does that have on the graph? It goes down 2. It goes down 2. So, we'll make a note of that. Down 2. Okay. How about when we add something to x inside of the absolute value? Left 2. That's all there is. There's, there's nothing out here. There's no negative. Those are the only changes that will happen. So if you're subtracting something, you can go to right 2? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, go left 2, go up 2, a little dot right there. Okay. Remember what this is called? What this dot that I just put? What part of the V is that going to be? The vertex. Very good. Very good. Um, so now all we have to do is make sure the slope is right. What's the slope going to be? going to be one, right? And we're talking about the slope, the right side and the left side will be the negative of that slope. It'll be a mirror image. Okay, so we'll go up one over one, we'll go up one over one, like that. And on this side, we'll go up with the left one. There we go. And it's done. Why did you go, like, at the very, very beginning, yeah. and you went up two and to right two, instead of down, down. two? Down two and then left two, but you went up two. Oh, well, that's because I'm kind of a delver sometimes. So, uh, no, sir. Don't do that. Did it because I, I wasn't thinking. That's what I should have done. Let's not mention that happened in the, in the halls. So, yeah. 18. 18. All right, so we, we should really think about this direct variation thing. What does it mean if x and y, in fact, do vary directly? We don't know if they do, but if they do, what does it mean? That's a. A conclusion we draw about it, but the definition of it is what? A uh, number, a constant, multiplied by a variable. Is equal to? Y. Y, okay. Y is equal to a constant times a variable x. Okay. Um, so that means to get y, we take x and we multiply by a number. So we take x and multiply by a number, it gives you y. All right? So if we look at this table, I'm just going to go with x and y here. I know it says time and distance. We're going to save ourselves some time. Well, let's look at this first relationship. Could this be direct variation? If we just had these two? Yeah. Certainly it could. Right? With, with a few exceptions, none of which I could even really think of right now. I could take any, well, let's say for the, the real numbers. I could take any real number and multiply by a real number and get any other real number I want. Any real number I want. Uh, what would it take to multiply 4 uh, and get 184? 4 times what is 184? 46. 4 times 46 is 184. So this was direct variation, and this would be the equation. 46 times x. Just take x, multiply it by 46, and that'll give you y. Now that needs to work for all of the other pairs. Okay? Does that work? No. 5. What's 5 times 46? 
230? 2.30. 2.30. What is it supposed to be? 460. It's supposed to get 460, and it didn't work. So the same constant does not work even for these two pieces of data. Uh, so no, it's not direct radiation. It didn't work. Okay. Next. You all would want to know that I threw my best round yeah, ever yesterday at Blue Mountain. So. What? Congratulations. Good job. Good job. I played what disc golf yesterday. What did you do? Yeah, Shay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm so sore today. Because when you're being awesome, you kind of get sore sometimes. Well, if you should, like threw less throws, you should be less sore. Or each throw was more. So it's one of those things. <laughs> you never know. You never know. The truth about awesomeness is kind of counterintuitive. Maybe I'm more certain than throwing at my less throws so hard. Yeah. What is the point? They're going way farther. You had to use more energy. Like, what do you the do? point is that you want to have joy. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> you play golf, so you want to th th like take as few strokes as possible to get from. But you're throwing a disc. Throwing a disc. Yeah, so it's yeah. like golf with a frisbee. With a disc. But like, so are you like throwing the disc into a pole? Into a basket. Never have biggest basket. Never. Uh, what, is what is the radius of this? I don't know what the like radius is. <laughs> it's probably about. This is a top view. No, I've never been. That's a pretty good. Bird's eye. That's probably too big. A little. Big Wait, is this like? But that, that's about how big. How big is your frisbee? How big is your frisbee? Uh, no, that's too. Wow, well, this is a hard game. <laughs> <laughs> that is intense. Yeah, about that big. How many frisbees could fit in that one basket? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Is that about weight or just surface area? I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. a good question. Maybe next time you go. But from that, from when field. you're looking at it, it looks like this. So it's about that big around. It has this top band, and then that's on a pole, and then here's the actual basket it has to land in. There. And this is it. These, these are chains hanging down here. Yeah, you did this in gym. Because it hits the chains and it slows it down. It absorbs some of that that momentum. Oh, we always throw it like into the chain. That's not cheating. Well, if you go back in time, what they used to have was a, a sleeve of metal over a wooden pole. They call them ringers, and you would hit it, and it would just ring, and you would know that you hit it. Mm. And if you go before that, what kind of metal would they do? They would have like trees. <laughs> a tree. You know, like you say trees with discs. Wow. No, That's they would have this. They would have like genius. targets hanging between two trees. Oh. Before that, they just had trees. They just right. threw them at trees. It's a history of fall. No, they used to the <laughs> threw it at trees. Use some random. That's fine. So let's go back, 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 back. Now I taught you about this golf. All right, let's go here. You want a team? No, I was by myself. Oh. Okay, so we know how to graph. Quit trying to do this. So uh, we're going to graph an absolute value uh, equation. Um, we have an example of it there. Uh, that, you know, sometimes it'll move down or right or be uh, steeper or be less steep or be upside down or something like that. Okay. That's if we had y by itself. So assume it would be a lot easier if we had y by itself. Subtract. Four on both sides. And if you're paying attention, you see this looks a whole lot like that. They're, they're almost identical except for the signs and the actual numbers. The ideas are exactly the same. What effect will this have? Down four. Down, down four. And this? To the right, right four. Right. Let's go five. Oh, well, I was close. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I just went off. Um, we'll go down four. One, two, three. We'll actually go down this time. Then we'll go to the right five. And there's our vertex. And nothing else has changed. The steepness is the same. And so on. And so we'll just 
make sure we have the right slope. Yes. 24. 24. Gonna graph this. Well, we, we should know this part by now. What's this going to do to the graph? Left two. Left two. Now, this is new. What's slope. this going to do? Slope. I thought the one half that slope make you. Less steep. Less steep. Affect the slope. Playable. Why is it plus two? It's minus two. two. <sighs> so throw it around. You Wait people, if you like, do it correctly, stuff <laughs> that you have in your head. It's true. I'm saving a lot of time by uh, by erasing those. Just get to the left. All right. It should go right. to the right. The right two. Okay, that's cleared up now. So we got that one half. It's going to affect the slope, the slope, the steepness. Uh, it's going to be half as steep as it was before, or where the the just regular run-of-the-mill uh, absolute value graph is going to be a slope of one, up one and over one. This one will be a slope of one half, up one and over two. So that'll be definitely less steep. So it moves to the right two. That. And its slope will be up one and over two. Okay. Just a reminder, this is the slope of the right side. Right. And it's the opposite slope of the left side. Right. It's once you go to the left of the vertex that you start having negative numbers go into the absolute value and come out positive, right? And it's like this reverse relationship. But when you're to the right of the vertex, all the numbers that go into the absolute value are positive, and then they come out positive, like it doesn't change anything. So on the right side, we find that that's the slope. Yes, average. Uh, 26. <laughs> Another one. What's this one gonna do? Oh, five. Right, it's gonna go up five. What's this one gonna do? Left five. Yeah, it's gonna go left five. Okay, now what's this going to do? Make the slope of the left one. Wouldn't that make it go down? Yeah. down. Well, it, it, will, it will open down. This is still, whatever this number is, this is negative one right now, this is still the slope of the right side. Always the right side, always. Okay? Always the slope of the right side. Uh, <coughs> it's gonna go up five, and left five, and it's gonna open down, right? It's gonna be upside down, or we just take it as the slope of the right side, which would send it right through the origin, since it's, up five and to the left five. If we follow the slope of negative one down, one down, one down, one down, we go through the origin. It's a nice color combo, I think. It looks nice. What's next, Michael? Twenty-five. Twenty-five? Yeah. Uh, if you want to spend all your time graphing every single absolute value. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. I think it's fun. Mark, that's yeah, it's but if I just write it like this, now your absolute value of x plus 3. Oh, dang. That was a lot easier. Yeah. Right. Up 3. Upside down. Right? Yeah. Or just take it as a slope to the right side. Continuing on. What else? Let's do this thing. 28. 28? Can you say 28? Never mind. Never mind. I don't have enough Okay, let's cover one last thing. It's not on here. It's uh, piecewise, piecewise yeah. defined functions. Yeah. Okay. Talk about it. They're not difficult. They're really not. Okay. Is it pretty okay? What's a coordinate point at? Is this a graph? Yeah, it's just a graph. Okay. Well, 
It's not a graph. This is the coordinate plane. The graph is the actual thing that you draw. Okay? Don't roll your eyes at me. I'm telling you the truth. What? I didn't roll my eyes at you. You rolled your eyes. No, I looked at Michael Close and your eyes you and you were right. So I wouldn't see it, but I saw you. <laughs> Alright, piecewise defined functions. Piecewise, they're defined in pieces. Okay? Um, okay let's just start with a, a, a normal function. 2x plus 5. I'm just making this up. I, I talked about this with another class and they're confused about where all this stuff is coming from. I'm making it all up. Just moving along. Alright. So this function is y equals 2x plus 5. The way functions work is you put things in and things come out. Factory. A factory. Things go into the factory and things come out of the factory, just like a function. Okay. Where do things go in? Typically in, in most functions. Where do you put things into this function? X, right? X is the input. And then Y, right? This is Y. This is the same thing as Y. The output is the result of all the arithmetic that you do after you put the stuff in. Okay. Um, so, well, what does this mean? What does that mean? What's that? F of 2. F of 2? We read it as F of 2. What does F of 2 mean? Substitute 2 in for the x. That's exactly what it wants you to do. It does not mean multiplication. It never means multiplication. Don't think it means multiplication, because you know what? It's not. It doesn't mean multiplication. OK, it just means substitute 2 for x. So we put 2 in there. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. Okay? So you put in 2 and you get out of 9. Right. You know, wh what other numbers can you put in for x? A lot of them. A lot of them. An infinite number. Any number you want, you put it in to x. Okay? Uh, but that's, would it be true if I changed that up on you? If I said, okay, yeah, you can put lots of numbers into this function, but let's say only put numbers into this function, numbers that are less than... Two. Only numbers that are less than two. Okay? So if the x that you want to use is less than two, go ahead and use this function. Okay? But otherwise, don't use this function. Right? So now, what am I supposed to make of this? What am I supposed to do here? Huh? X we want x to be two. So we have to use a different function. Okay, or right now no function at all. Right? We don't have a function that will accept an x of 2. Right? So it, it, it won't go in there. So if x is greater than or equal to 2, now I'll tell you what you can do with the 2. I'll tell you where you can, uh, what function you can use. You can use uh, 1 half x minus 3. And you can use that function for when x is a value like that. Okay? So without this, we didn't have a place to put 2. But now that we're saying, OK, if x is 2 or if x is greater than 2, then use this function. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know piecewise functions. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So f of 2, you would put in there. Where would we, what would we do with this? Uh, f of 1. We use, use the first one. OK, let's go on to graphing. This function has a graph. This function produces a graph as well. All right. Typically, if we didn't have these conditions on there, we would just, you know, this line would go from here to over there, and that one go from here to over there. Right? It would span the whole thing. But on the graph, just like in symbols, we're, we're saying don't always use each of these functions. Only use this function sometimes, and use this function sometimes. Okay. Use this function, or draw the graph of this function when x is less than 2. Where is x less than 2 on the graph? To the left of 2. To the left of 2. So we go where x is 2. Don't have to draw that, that imaginary line if you don't want to. And we look to the left. Right? x is less than 2 over there. So if you're in here where x is less than 2, draw that graph. Okay, so we'll draw that graph. y intercept of 5. And slope of 2, up to over 1. And we go like that. But then we get to 2. Are we supposed to use this graph for this function when x is 2? No. Nope. So how do I show that on the graph that open I don't circle. want? Open circle. Right? 
right? Get close to two, but don't, don't actually let two go into this function. Right? There is no output from this function when x is two. That's why there's an open circle, like emptiness. There is no function there when x is two. When x is two, this function won't work. It won't have any output. Starting at two and greater than two over here and right at two, we're going to use that function. There. So we'll use uh, those things as a guide, a negative 3 uh, y-intercept and a slope of 1 half, so up 1 and over 2. So we can start right there, and we can do a closed circle, because this is going to be the output when x is 2. Okay, so we can do a closed circle. Uh, we can do another up 1 and over 2, and graph this line like that. Okay. So it's like we graphed both of those. We took away that part of that graph, took away this part that graph, and we just Frankenstein them together. We stitched them up, and then there's the, the freak that we made. Okay. Your question, Abby? No, I just look like this all the time. You have a question, <laughs> please. No, I'm good, I think. Okay. The other people with question faces that look like not question faces, they have questions? Yeah, Tanner. Uh, the, the graph where you're like, you shade in? Yeah. Um, do you like to try an example of that? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's do a good one. 29, negative y is less than or equal to 3x minus 5. What's the first thing you might do here so it looks more normal? Divide by negative. Divide by negative 1. So you get y is negative 3. Negative 3, x plus 5. Greater than or equal to. You gotta flip the sign when we multiply by a negative or divide by a negative. We graph it, we start by treating it like it was an equation. Okay? If we treat it like it was an equation, the graph that we wind up getting is this line. This is a linear equation, a linear function. Y intercept of 5, slope of negative 3, down 3 into the right one. Okay? And then we draw the line. And we, we draw a solid line. Because it's okay to take a point from this line, right, that x and that y, and plug it into this, this thing, into this statement. Um, because when you pick a point from the line, you'll get this and this are the same, and that's okay because equals 2 is fine. That's okay. But not just equals 2, another part of it is greater than. y needs to be greater than. So where will we find y values that are greater than the y values on the line. Above. Above the line. <coughs> so we shade above the line. like this. Yes. <laughs> Why, no. <laughs> Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Is that just like the one that we just did? It's a piecewise function. Yeah. This is like right here. Y is, uh, is zero. Right? So Y equals zero, but just from say zero to two. So from, um, from, uh, from two or from from zero, including zero, up to two, but not including two. Right, that's that's part of the the function, and now it jumps up to say three, but only from two, including two because of that closed circle, and up to four, but not including four because that's a, a, an open circle, and then it jumps up to uh, six. Just making up these numbers, okay? So from, from x equals four up to six, but not including six, we get an output of six. We'll put those all together, that's the function. <coughs> and I'm just, those numbers I was making up, right? I'm making up that this was three, I'm making up that this was six. 
But if that's 3, that's 6. This is 2, 4, and 6. This would represent that function. Piece wide to pi. All right. Can we get the show on the road? Michael? Do you have like a cool trick to remembering like the way that inequalities go? Like you graded them in left wing? Because I was getting mixed up. Uh, the cool way that I remember it is, is, is the truth, I guess. <laughs> y is the value, of, is, represents values on the graph. Okay? Mm -hmm. Y represents vertical, you know, it's, it's represented in the vertical direction. Okay? In the vertical direction, big things, greater things are up here, and smaller things, lesser things, or down here, okay? One thing that might be messing you up is mistakenly thinking of it left and right, okay? We could think of it left and right, but then left and right, that's an x thing. So we would have to like solve this for x to figure out what x needs to be. Does x need to be greater than something? x need to be less than something? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're making a real Just do the t thing, you know, like they yeah. I don't think that's what he's confused about. Yeah, I, mean, like, I hate, like, on the first one, I can't, I can't tell you if it's greater than or less than 3x minus 5. Oh, this side is, is greater. Uh -huh. And a, a common thing to use is that the alligator wants to eat the bigger thing. Okay. Or the thing that I think of is, like, I don't know, the, the distance between these two things is bigger. Right, it's greater. And the distance between these two things is not. I like to make up stories, okay? So the story is, um, let's say, 2 is equal to 2, yeah? There's like this, this nice smooth flow through the equal sign from 2 to 2, okay? But then one day this guy wrote this down and didn't have a symbol to represent it. So he took the equal sign and he's like, what if I just kind of, like, bend two sides together of the equal sign? Is that really what he did? I don't know. I'm just making it up. <laughs> just making it up. And, you know, if he did that, I think if, I, if, I, if that was my idea, to like push together two sides of the equal sign, I would make the, the smaller number on the side with, where like the distance between those two parts of the equal sign was smaller and the other side was greater. That's the thing in my head. You could think of an alligator eating a bigger thing. That it's a gun. The tip of the gun shoots the little numbers. So then, like, it's all getting all stuck. Okay. So if I'm the lesser than you, and the thing that everybody should do, I'll do alligator. <laughs> with with anything like this, because I agree, like there, there's no there's truth to the fact that two is two. But there's not any truth to the symbol that we use. The symbol is agreed. We just remember that that's the symbol that means these two things are the same, right? And somebody at some point made up this symbol to mean that one side's bigger than the other side. Whatever it takes for you to realize that this is the larger side and this is the smaller side based on the symbol is what you should do, right? Whatever makes sense to you. You could use the alligator, you could use the gun, but then if you ever mix those up, then it'll be kind of confusing because does the gun shoot the big thing or does the alligator eat the small no. thing? Or, you know what I'm saying? Why does it shoot the small thing? Because small things are easier to kill. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wrong. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it makes sense. If that's what's in your mind, that's that's fine. We talked about. Well, you like yeah, do nice numbers and mean numbers. That's what I was gonna say. And girl numbers and numbers are boys and girls to me, and they're mean and nice to me. They're mean and nice. There's no truth to it. It's just the way it looks to me. Okay, but. That's just what happens in my mind. And if a gun happens in your mind and it reminds you that one side is smaller, that works great. Now I feel like a violent if person. If it's an alligator, that's fine. If, it, if it's the story that I make in my mind, that's fine. You should just, whatever it is, sit down with it and make it make sense. Make something for yourself. Okay? But otherwise, no, I don't have like a rhyme or anything like that. Okay? Well, let's get started then.